it is bad, bad, bad. Okay. Desktop. Share. I start screen share. Okay, there we go. Right. So um, before we start, um, these people, these three men, are going to uh, are your class representatives, or at least there are. These are three of them. What? What? what you want to ask? No, he's giving you that. Oh. Oh, he's fine. Um, they are quickly want to chat to you. So, um, will they be able to chat without a mic? Like, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well, um, my name is Reese Williams. Hi. And we. Hi, Reese. <laughs> the important thing you need to know is that in the past, class reps have been quite. Um, under the radar and this year they're trying to change that so they're trying to make us available if you guys want to ask any questions whether it be you stressing because tomorrow is a test and you don't know what's going on and I don't know you feel like chatting to someone we fill up our email addresses and our names on the board I'm the top one that's spelled weirdly but that's how you spell it please feel free to email any of us we all can help if we can't help we more than we will just send it up to someone who can if you have any issues with computer science, sorry? don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if you have any problems with the class or anything outside the class, you can also email us. Otherwise, of course, you have to say if you'd like to chat to him. Yes. yes and then, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Ali, I'm uh, uh, I'm Kyle Hartsburg. Let's say Kyle, so. Oh. Yeah. I'm Justin. Um, third one on the board there. What language do you cover? English. Oh. <laughs> uh, no Zulu. No Koza, just English. Um, come with me to anything. Yeah. Can if you, you want to phone me, email me, yes. your phone oh, number. We've got a podcast, thank yeah. heavens. Where? We've got four. We've been listening to women. What? what? If you feel more Where? comfortable talking to women, hey. just type your name. And, and we were also looking for Robbie. I don't know where you went. Robbie. Sorry, I was looking at Um, I have a question. What, what's that fourth email address? Are we about to? They have to four. Yeah. Okay, okay, so, um, oh, okay, let's wait for. Yeah, the same. Yeah. You shall have a lot of use of capital letters. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go to four. <laughs> Hi, I'm I'm Dusha. Um, I represent the people who don't who didn't do IT or um, the course. Oh yes, that's good. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah, that's good. Uh, just say, who did IT school of you for? Oh. Oh. Very representative, and you did not. Okay, did you do the virtual course? Okay, that's even better. Um, no, because um, we need the not the first common denominator, but it's good to have someone from that with the chunk. Okay, so we've been asked to tell you guys about three things that are quite important. First of all, NSK at sun.ac.za is the natural science faculty's email address. If you don't want to speak to us, you don't want to speak to Yucky, you don't want to speak to the dean, you don't want to speak to anybody, feel free to email them. You can just put there at the bottom. Please keep them confidential, and they won't mention your name anywhere. That's obviously if you have a serious problem with something, which we probably won't have, hopefully. And then three important dates. 22nd of Feb, which oh, was no, a few no, weeks ago. No, no, no. no one hears what you say. They're not even listening to you. So you have time. to write it down and say it. <sighs> okay. Okay, so, well, it's not really the date, not that important. But on the 22nd of Feb, a hoodie design competition was launched. So we're getting natural science hoodies, which will be actually quite cool in winter, kind of. But the thing is, you have to incorporate every single element of science, whether it be chemistry, physics, computer science, food science, earth science, every possible thing into a picture which you can put onto a hoodie. If you are keen on design, if you like designing things, please email this one. Natural Science Faculty. Just email it to them, right? 
And then on the 9th of March, we're having something called a seminar. Oh, okay. <laughs> seminar, 9th of March. It's Nobel Prize. It's a maybe on the Nobel Prize. It's a maybe on the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Coming Which to speak one? to us. Sorry? Which one? It's a maybe. We're not allowed to mention it until we actually oh, know who it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quite official. Um, so basically, it's a seminar for science students. Last year it was quite a success as far as I understood. People come and you just listen to this person. It is free. It's just part of the science faculty. So you're more than welcome to come. We'll let you know more details later on. That's on the 10th. Okay, and then on the 10th of March, March, we're going to have the NFC, I can't believe it, open meeting. Yay. Okay, so basically the NSC open meeting is a place where you can come to listen to the dean of the faculty. You get to meet all um, all of the management of the science faculty as well as we get to speak of issues of... <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> no, but seriously, it's quite important. There are issues that if you have anything, they're more welcome to address. There's a Q&A session then that you guys can um, engage in. And yeah, that's about it. Yes, language policy. And please speak to me if you have anything, or not me, speak to any of us if you have anything regarding language in any of your science classes, which is quite, yeah, an important topic we discussed on Saturday. Okay. So there we go. Um, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. I will uh, put all this info if I can get. Yeah, we're going to test. Okay. Um, so there's also going to be science docs. Um, it's going to include um, first, second, and third years. And it's going to be the same um, prices as the high stocks. So. Hang on, hang on. Uh, just, uh, just repeat, I couldn't hear. Oh, yes, of course, of course. So if you're a BCOM student, um, you can participate freely in any of this. Technically, it's not your faculty, but technically you're doing a science course. So you're allowed to give feedback, you're allowed to um, come meet. They're not going to take a uh, um, look at your student course or anything like that. So, you know, no, if you're doing a science course, you must think of yourself as a science student. And in some ways you are doing a science. I mean, the science of economics. It's all about lies. Um, one uh, more thing on this topic. I think there is a hidden agenda here. And that is that uh, the campus has had lots of protests and uh, activity, but the participation of science students has been really low. So I think they're trying to stir up a little political activity, perhaps have a few protests of our own, you know. We never had parts or anything like that. So if you're really upset about chemical compounds in McDonald's burgers, <laughs> like some people are, it's pretty legit, then you should come along, you should participate. <coughs> uh, protest or not, yes. Okay, Doki, let's see. Uh, where am I? Um, I'm not here. Oh, no, I'm supposed to open. I'll put that stuff on the web. Um, it, it's... Uh, down on me that I haven't updated the web with the pics of the reps yet. Um, teaching 2016 one. Just give me a second. Open the slides. Yes. Okay, so we want to talk about arrays. Um, we're still having fun with arrays. Um, and today, I mean, there are only really five slides, or four slides even, including if you don't count this first one. Um, we just want to get comfortable with arrays. We've seen them on Monday. Um, we've seen them before, the easy piece. We're always talking about um, how to handle computer science one because it's a difficult course to teach. The, as we know now, now no. there's some of you who have never programmed before um, and come back, didn't come to the reading course, and we want to drill you. We want to teach you how to program because it's fun and not to excited and all that. But there's also a big part of, uh, component contingent of you who can program and we want to keep you excited. 
um, because it is exciting. I mean, it, you, you know that programming is great. So um, it's difficult to balance these two groups. In the future, we may split the class into one thing that I need to ask about. Maybe I should look to the labs, but to all of you, um, if you feel that uh, there is too much of records, I still haven't put up the captions. I'm so sorry, but I just uh, this year I'm head of department, and there are just endless meetings. There's no glory. It's just a slog of getting thousands of emails saying, "I want to study computer science at your university. Can you tell me more about Unisa? You know, sorry, we're not Unisa, and meetings with all kinds of people. So uh, I'm extremely busy, and I try to keep up, but the captions aren't up yet. No back for the test. And I feel guilty about that, but um, maybe I should reduce the Afrikaans a little bit because uh, your indication was 70% of you prefer English as a language of instruction, and only 30% prefer Afrikaans. But you must tell me, I, honestly, I, I don't know what to do about that. I don't mind either language. I'm equally bad in both. But let's get back to arrays, which is unambiguous and all happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Let's do some um, gamey, gamey kind of stuff. Um, one year soon, I'm going to propose a card game as a year project or a semester project for Computer Science 1 because card games are fun. It's just that other games are fun too. But we, that doesn't stop us from talking about uh, games in the class and how you handle it. So if you have a deck of cards, 52 cards in a deck, and you can't store each individual card in a an array of its own, sorry, a variable of its own. So you need an array to store your cards. And in particular, um, you probably need an array of size 52, but that's on the next slide. Here at least is some code that will just print a random card. So the very first thing in our little um, slide is little program fragment is an array of strings. I'm telling Java, I want a string array, I want to call it rank, so I'll be talking about rank 0, rank 1, rank 2, rank 3, and each of those ranks will contain a string. Rank 0 will be a string, rank 1 will be a string, up to I don't know how far. Uh, instead of creating a new array, I'm giving it initial content. So I'm uh, giving it the following 13 strings. Two in double quotes, that's a string, not the value two. Three, four, ten, jack, king, queen, ace. So the size of rank will be 13, and each of its elements, each of the 13 elements, will contain one string, one of these strings. A0 will be two, A12 will be ace. Okay, and the same for suit. Suit is an array of strings, and it contains these four strings, so its size will be four, and um, a0 will be clubs, A3 will be spades. Okay, right. And then I pick a random suit or rank, sort of rank. So rank of random, clubs 13, I pick that. So that becomes value between 0 and 12. Uh, gee, I said that a little quickly. Let's just make sure. Rank of random is a value from some random value from 0 to just before 1. If I multiply by 13, I get a value that's somewhere between 0 and just before 13, up to 12.999. And when I int that, when I cast that, when I do a type conversion to an int, it will throw away the decimal part. So this will be a value of int from 0, 1, 2, up to 12. If this was almost 1, times 13 will be almost 13, so it'll be 12 point something something. And the point something something will fall away when I do the cost to the end. And then I'll just get 12. Okay, so I'm sure that this will be ranked from 0 to 12. All values are equally likely, so any of those rands are equally likely. Same for suits, I pick a value from 0 to 3. And then finally, I just do a print line, I print the rank, and I print space of space, and I print the suit. So this will print some random card. Um, I don't know which one, and I stupidly didn't type this into a program, so I can't even show you. But this is easy enough. So we're using arrows, we're using them, the R of man to get our suit. Uh, we're initializing the arrows like that. 
And that's how we compile time. So this initialization, this setting up of the error, doesn't happen when you execute the program. It's already when you compile it in your Java C. The Java puts those values inside the arrows. We can change an arrow at runtime. We can also construct arrows at runtime. So I can tell Java, uh, I want an array of things called deck, and I want you to make a new arrow for me now with 52 boxes. So there are 52 boxes of strings. And then I have a for loop. I should stop pointing at the screen because YouTube can't see. Then I have a for loop. Um, give me a sec. If I do it a little differently, I can <laughs> highlight here. I have a for loop R that goes from 0 up to 13, but not including. And inside that, I have another for loop that takes S from 0 up to 4, but not including 4. And I say, tricky part, that deck of this value is rank R of suit S. So this is exactly what I printed just now. And down here, you can see what, what it looks like. But I'm putting that inside this element of array deck. And I guess this is the most difficult part of the code. How do I calculate that value 4 times R plus S? Uh, well, let's think about it. If R is 0, instead of thinking, I can show. Uh, oh, no, it's a disco again. Once again, I'll s try to shield with my body. Okay. <laughs> I'm not used to teaching like this. OK, right. So um, let's just make a little table. This is beautiful. R is and then four times R plus S. Okay? So R is going to loop 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 13. But inside that, S is going to go 0. <coughs> so for R 0, S is going to go 0, 1, 2, 3. And then R is going to be incremented to be 1. And S, the second for loop, will execute again. So let's just look at the code. So this outer for loop R takes R from 0 to 13. But the inner, sorry, 12. But the inner for loop, every time, for every value of R, I do this code. And this code says, make S go from 0 to 3. So I make S go from 0 to 3 for R0, then I repeat for R1, then for R2, OK, fine. So I know this is basically the pattern. And let's calculate this value. So 4 times R is 0, plus S is 0. So the first card will be stored there. 4 times R is 0, so it will be 0 for all of these first four. And I just add S, so this will give me 1, 2, and 3. That's easy peasy. So I'm filling in the deck array. Um, <coughs> whatever I write there. OK, right. And when I get to this line, R is now 1. So that's 4 times 1, which is 4, plus S, which is 0. It's 4, and R stays the same for all of these four. Every time I add S, so 4 plus 1 is 5, 4 plus 2 is 6, 4 plus 3 is 7. And then it'll carry on, and this will be 8 and 9. So this is exactly what I want. As R and S go through their loops, the element of deck that I'm initializing is deck 0, deck 1, deck 2, deck 3, deck 4, deck 5, deck 6. Is that Doritos? Oh, is any left? Yeah. <laughs> no? <laughs> I love Doritos, but they're on the forbidden list. So I'll just ignore that. I'll just pretend it's broccoli. Um, as I go through R and S, uh, I'm initializing deck 0, Deck 1, deck 2, deck 3, deck 4, deck 5, deck 6. So I'm initializing the whole of the deck array. And I'm setting to the, to the strings that is, that's the name of the card. 
So that's what's going on in this code, and that's exactly what I want. And then when I'm done with that, where's my little, I need to buy the stick, damn it, why? I should remember that. Um, and then when I'm done with that, I go through all the cards and I print them. So now the question is, am I going to print two of clubs, two of diamonds, two of clubs, two of spades, two of diamonds, two of diamonds, two of clubs, like that? Or am I going to print like this? Two of clubs, two of diamonds, two of clubs. Two of clubs. <coughs> Oh, man, I hate it when there are mistakes on the slides. I made. <laughs> this is supposed to say two of clubs, three of clubs, four of clubs, five of clubs, six of clubs. All the clubs, and then it will start with two of diamonds, three of diamonds, four of diamonds, five of diamonds. So is it going to print them rank by rank, or is it going to print them suit by suit? Let's get a volunteer. Uh, I know I must take my students in class, but I do want to, so I can. <laughs> Brandon, A or B is going to print all the twos, all the threes, all the fours, all the clubs, all the clubs, all the diamonds, all the halves, all the spades. Please, 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 I'm going to tell you when I point to you, you must say A or B. I mean, you must say A, or you must say B. What's the question? <laughs> Excellent question. The question is, um, in what order will this output appear on the screen? Will it be all the twos, all the threes, all the fours, and so on? Or all the clubs, all the diamonds, all the hearts, all the spades? A or B? Which is better? A or B? Do I leave it or A? A, B, A, opinion. Uh, A, B, A, A, B. A, two A's, one B. Three A's, four A's, four. I'll take this in A. Uh, five A's, A. Okay, what? B, A, 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 A. A, B, B, um, I have no idea. <laughs> and clearly neither do you, as a collector. <laughs> no, you just undercut your own answer by making it seem as if you're not sure about things. No, always go your first instinct, even if it's wrong. You have to learn at university how to bullshit people. <laughs> Not lie to them, but tell them something like I do to you all the time. I tell you something that sounds like exactly what I'm talking about, whereas in fact I don't have a clue. Okay? And you give an answer, you say, that's beef show. Okay? And you don't, you don't go back on that. That's wishy washy. No, you commit even if it's the wrong answer. And if somebody points you out, calls you out, you say, oh, I misunderstood. I thought you meant what is it not going to print? <laughs> Okay, let's go here. We only need to do the first two because after the first two values, <coughs> we'll be able to distinguish uh, between this side and three of clubs, that side. So let's just calculate the two first values. Um, but inside deck, it'll put um, the equation goes deck of four times r plus s is equal to the rank of r, zero. That's rank, so the first rank is a 2, so that'll be a 2. Oh man, actually when this happens... Oh, I've got a shield. This will be a 2 of... And then suit 0 is clubs is the first suit. Club is always the lowest ranking suit. Whenever you play any game, it's almost always clubs that's lowest. Unless it's trumps. About that. Um, right, next one. This is the determining one. <coughs> Deck of 4 times r plus s, 4 times 0 plus 1 is 1 of 1 is equal to rank r 2 of suit is 1. So that's diamonds. <coughs> Okay, so the second thing that's printed, deck one, is um, uh, 
No, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> I, that doesn't matter if I take pictures. Let's make it nice and clear. See my clear handwriting. Right. So the second thing will be printed is two of five minutes. I'm really sorry that this is confusing, but I should say two of five minutes. The three of times is not deck one. Deck one is two of five minutes. So it's this, this that's printed, Brandon. No, you see that now, Brandon. Excellent. Okay, right. Excellent. Now, let's talk about shuffling. Because um, if you're going to write a card game, if you're going to write a card game in class today, push one to the question. Yes, ask me yes. You ask so many questions. I really like them. Please ask me. Yes. Four times. Oh, where did I get it from? Where did I get it from? Yes. If I don't, just tomorrow. <laughs> if I ask it on the test tomorrow, how are you going to figure it out? Um, well, that is such a good question. How are you going to figure it out? Do you think this is the only solution? What else do you propose? Okay, but let's think about it as follows. So let's pretend I'm in the inside loop and I didn't know this formula. Uh, I'm going through S0, S1, S2, and S3. And the first four is kind of easy. I mean, there's not, there's not much you can change about that. Each card has to have a rank, and we're going through the ranks with variable R, so that must have to be rank R. That's a current class rank. And R is R, R, R. And suit, there's not much question about that, because we're going through the suits with this S and formula, with S, variable S. And suit S is my current suit. So I've got my card, I've got the rank and the suit. And the real question is, where do I put it in the deck? How did I think of this formula for 4 times R plus S? So let's think, let's clear our minds and try to figure it out. So here I am in the for loop and I'm assigning the cards. Um, I've got some kind of formula. I don't know what it is. This is entirely unnecessary. Not necessary. Uh, I've got some kind of formula and I don't know what it is and I want to calculate it. So I've got rank R, rank zero, suit zero. Where do I put that? Well, let's say I put it at, at zero and I want to put this at one and this in two and this in three. So it looks like my formula should be deck of S is equal to that whole story about rank of R of dot, dot, dot. So it looks like this should be my formula, S. That seems fine. But now, in the next iteration of this R loop, I get to 1. I'm looking at the second rank now. And S starts at 0 again, because I'm working through the four suits. And if I keep on using that formula, I'll put this card, which is the uh, three of clubs. If I use that formula, S is zero, so that, then I'd be putting that in position zero, which is definitely wrong, because I've already put that card in, this is the two of clubs. I've really put this card, 0, 0, rank 0, suit 0, in deck 0. If I use this formula S, I'll be putting this card, 3 of clubs, in the same spot. I really want to put it in spot 4. So, what about this formula? Uh, what about this formula? Okay, that's definitely wrong. But based on this, I want to put this card, 3 of clubs, in deck 4. And these must all work correctly. 
I can easily make a new formula. Dec of R plus S is equal to the card. What do you think of this? R plus S, because it'll work. Um, one plus zero, oh no, it won't work. One plus zero is one. One plus one is two. Okay, no, I can't, I can't use this. This formula is also wrong. In fact, we can try many formulas here, but that zero represents these four cards in some way. That one represents these four cards. So that's why for every time I increment R, I'm actually jumping four cards ahead. That's why I said, that's how I figured out R times four plus S. <coughs> It's tricky if you have to think of it on the spot in the test. I'm not sure I'll ask you this question. This is unfair now, of course. But there may be some of the questions in the test that you think of. <coughs> you can come from and you won't ask anything. It's this level, yes. So we should basically use um, our two variables that we're given, like the outer part and the inner part, yes. and it's expected outputs to figure out the whole. What is that one word you said? As an expected? Like the output, because that's... Oh, oh, oh. yes, definitely. So, I mean, what you must do in the test is what I did, in any test. In any test, that is to say, what do I have to work with? Well, I've got this framework. What do I want to achieve? What can I possibly think of? I can think of doing it this way. Let's try it. Does it work? No, it doesn't. So this way is obviously wrong. Let's try something else. It's close, but if I make a small adjustment, I can get closer to the answer. I mean, all subjects basically can be done that way with trial and error. It's just that if you did trial and error in mathematics like this, you know, what's the derivative of sine of x? Um, well, I don't know. Which functions do I know? I know polynomials and linear constant functions. Let's start there. Um, trial and error just takes too, too long with mathematics. That's why we learn all these rules. The, the, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. We all know that because um, that's an easy abbreviation. We don't have to derive it every single time. And the same for computer science. There are things we learn um, from by trial and error. Oh, sorry, by, by rules. But some things we still have to figure out trial and error about this one. Yes? Could you not just have made a count inside the. So I'm getting there, please, please uh, give me a second. One way, uh, that's a very clever idea, and <coughs> I know it's clever because I had it too. Um, there are alternatives. So one definite alternative for this is to say, I'm not going to let R count in fours. I'm gonna have S count in thirteens. So I'm gonna use the formula, the deck of 13 times S plus R is my car. And this will also work because 0 and 0, uh, 13 times 0 plus 0 is 0. 13 times 1 is 13 plus 0 is 13. Then I'll have 26 and 39. So I fold in four cards. Apparently distributed through the deck. They're not all in one spot. Uh, and what about the other cards? Well, when I move up to the next iteration, 0 times 13 is 0, plus R is 1. So now I'm filling in the 1. Um, zero, 1 times 13 is 13, plus 1 is 14. 2 times 13 is 26, plus 1 is 27 and then 40. So I'm still filling up the deck array, except I'm not doing it systematically starting at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm jumping a dot in some way. This would have worked, but it's not very natural. I don't think you can figure this out in the test. It's just kind of a little crazy. But what, uh, what's your name again? Werner. Uh, Werner. Oh, Werner. Oh, just about. Okay. 
Um, but Vanna has suggested it makes a lot of sense, and that is that we can write this code very, very differently. It's not a big dramatic difference, but let's write it in a different way. Um, let's go here and just say um, back of cards. Low battery. Oh, oh, oh. I don't want to lose the, lose the battery. Uh, just plug this in. Go. Okay. Thanks for telling me, Mac. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Right. Um, I don't want to lose. Um, I don't. Uh, I said that before. What I want to do is rewrite the code. Of course, if I write code, I always write it neatly, so that should be indented. <coughs> There we go. Uh, let's just intend that nicely. Okay. So um, that's the code I made. I used to be size of that. And I used my secret formula. But I couldn't figure out that formula at all. There is a very different way, not very different, but a little different way of doing it. And that is to say, um, you want to initialize deck 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It looks like you count it. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, I can't inject another for loop to go from 0 to 51. I mean, it would be pretty stupid to say to do this. Or, so, stupid. That was actually a very clever idea. Let's just see what will happen. Um, R is 0, S is 0, and I get to this inner for loop. And C starts at 0, and it goes up to 51. And what do I do inside? I say, deck 0 is that card. Deck 1 is that card. Deck 2 is that card. Deck 3 is that card. Deck 4 is that card. So I'm filling the whole deck with one single card. The card with R is 0, S is 0. And when I'm done with filling the deck like that, um, I'll be finished with this for loop. I'll get to here. I'll jump back up. Increment S, S is now 1. I check if it's still below 4. It is. And then I go and do the same thing again. I fill the whole deck, starting at 0, ending at 51. I fill the whole deck with card R0, S1, which is the 2 of diamonds. And I fill the whole deck with that card. So this is definitely not going to work. Even though it looked promising. I want to fill deck 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It looks like a counter. It looks like I could use a for loop. Um, this, unfortunately, doesn't work. Um, what if I do the following? What I can't, I'm, I, I don't want to explain it too much because I want to finish one more slide, the exciting slide. And I'll just show you what you can do. You can say, C is the next slot I'm going to fill. I'm going to go through these four loops, and inside, right to the inside, I'm going to put one card into the deck. And then I'm going to increment C. And then in the next iteration, I'm going to put another card in. We'll get the next one if C has been incremented. And in the next iteration, I'll put the next card in the next card. So C starts at zero. Every time I need to fill in a card, I say deck C is that card. And then after this, I go C equals C plus 1. So I make C one more. Every time I want to add a card to the deck, I put it in position C, slot C of the array, of the deck array, and I make C one more. So it's now the pointing. C is now the number of the next card I'm going to put in the array. And since this will execute 13 times the big loop, and inside iteration there are four iterations of S, 4 times 13 is 52. So C will be, I'll be adding 52 cards, starting card 0. C will be implemented 52 times, and at the end, C will be equal to 52. Okay, right, so that's an alternative. Um, you must stop me if you don't understand this. It's not important for me to finish the, these slides. It's more important for you to understand what I'm doing. Um, the captions are not up yet, even though front show is somewhere has sent you the translations instead of that time to sync them up. You did mention I made mistakes, I made some mistakes in class. I probably make mistakes all the time. 
Firstly, um, when I'm standing here, I'm so excited. I can't think to say, I'm going to tell you loads of stuff, there's a million stuff I'm going to this one. Um, so I sometimes probably say the wrong thing. But also, if you're up here, there's light shining in your eyes, you know, it's like being on stage. It's like being like, I feel like you're on stage, so I'm confident <laughs> that you know, you're caught in the headlights and your life is just glamorous and you get confused and you say the wrong thing. So if I make a mistake, point it out, don't be afraid. I, I want to be all correct, as much as correct as I can. And if I go un too fast or I say something that's unclear, you must ask a question. Okay, please don't be ashamed. Um, there won't be enough time for shuffling, but let's at least uh, give it a go. So I want to shuffle the car at the deck. <coughs> and I brought my special camera, which I have used for something else, but I also brought my deck of cards. I still want to show you my magic trick, which is really nice. But unfortunately, it belongs in the data presentation representation chapter, so um, I can't show. It. I, I won't show you my trick today. But in any case, here's a deck of cards. It's ordinary playing cards. Um, nothing special about them. They're not marked anything, and we want to shuffle them. So how do you shuffle cards? How do you shuffle cards by hand? I can't do this. Good enough. Okay, excellent. How do you shuffle cards? Well, there's overhand shuffle. So, and there's this riffle shuffle. I really honestly can't do uh, I'm not going to even try it. So, um, how are we going to simulate that on the computer? Because we now have an array called deck that contains all the cards. How are we going to shuffle these, this array? Well, we can swap elements of the array. So that's, in some way, um, one way of mixing the, the deck up. I mean, I can take just some random cards and exchange those two. And now the deck is a little more shuffled. So I can pick any random card and just take another one out of my array, well, not out of my array, and swap these two. So one way is definitely to pick random spots in the array, random uh, elements of the array, and swap their values. Now, how long will it take to do that? Any ideas, any thoughts on that? I don't know how you can have, because unless you've thought a lot about the shuffling the deck of cards, it's not easy to say. But I can tell you that. If you just follow this strategy, so I've got some kind of while loop, it will run for a number of times, I'm not sure how many, and what it does is it picks two random spots in the array, in the deck array, just a random spot here and a random spot there, and it swaps those elements. You'd think that this will, if you do it a million times, it will really shuffle the pack, but it takes a really long time before the deck is properly shuffled. In fact, I can calculate roughly <coughs> and it will take longer than the age of the Earth to statistically make sure that the deck is shuffled. Is that correct? How old is the Earth? Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a really big number. How many seconds? A million times five million is 10 to the time. 12. So, definitely it's bigger. So to statistically be sure that the the pack is shuffled, the deck is shuffled, I have to do this procedure of picking a random card there and picking a random card there and swapping them and then putting it back. I'll have to do this for a very long time before I can be sure that a deck of cards is shuffled. So how on earth do we ever shuffle decks of cards? Uh, five long minutes and I'll stop. Uh, we use this very nice little algorithm. The problem with picking two random elements is that you never know if you're ever going to pick a certain element. A certain, some element may be picked many times and some may only be picked a few times. And in some way, that's not fair. So what we want to do is to ensure that every element is shuffled, is exchanged at least once. So the way to do that is to say, I'm going to go through the cards one by one. Each and every single card I'm going to go through. So I start with the first card. I can't show both. I can show both actually, but I'm running out of time. Um, 
I did call I, I started to call I, I systematically went all the dogs. And for each I, each card in that deck, I think one other random card. And I exchange for it. This is very, very different from what I was before. Before I said we pick a random I, and we pick a random J and we exchange them, and we keep on doing this. But now I'm saying is let I don't, it's not random, go through all the cards one by one, and for each I I pick another J which I'm going to swap. It. Uh, perhaps it's best if we carry on on Friday. I'm going to stop now. Um, is there anything else? Reps or anybody else wants to say? Everybody is happy. We have tests tomorrow. I've got to tell you, we have a test. Please don't forget. Where? Such a good question. Uh, that is an excellent question. It's in uh, 406 and 305. Just come to either. There will be signs to tell you where to go. Right. Say again? <laughs> <laughs>